Leonard, welcome back to The Out Agenda. Now, your book, The Last Prince of Atlantis. Lots has happened since the last time we were here. You want to kind of... Yes. Well, first tell us just a little synopsis of what the book's about. Well, the book is about Alan King is an unassuming black teenager living in a blue-collar family. After finding a magical crystal necklace, he discovers that he is actually an Atlantean prince. Suddenly, things change for the gawky teenager. He gains the powers of telepathy, teleportation, and he finds out he can, he can communicate with sea animals. Along with a beautiful Greek goddess, two orphaned friends, and his zany uncle, together they fight against Alan's mortal enemies as they try to restore his kingdom, the lost city of Atlantis. Oh, how fun. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's an adventure. And you've had an adventure since this book came out. Yes. Uh, I mean, you've been everywhere. I, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like right now we're filming, as you can see, um, for a documentary that I wanted to create for the book. I, I basically wanted to show the world as when, after con- this all started after Comic-Con when we, after we first spoke, when, we, when I did the last interview with you. After Comic-Con, when I had the characters, uh, these two beautiful models, uh, Kevin Rankin and Emily Parker, dressed like the last prince of Atlantis and the Greek goddess Athena, people were going crazy over them. And that's when I knew I had to create an authentic book series. So I hired this wonderful lady named Suzanne Potts, who is a screenwriter. She was working on Breaking Bad. So the original book you have this book right here. This book right there. There's three books For in our one. For listeners, yes. <laughs> we we edited it and made it a three-book series. So as she was editing book one, I told her, it's time for me to, to go around the world so I can have the authenticity and detailed uh, description of the characters. So I started off in Australia. Oh, so that's why you went around the world, because I couldn't figure out. So you went to the places you wrote about. Yes. Yes. I went to the places I wrote How about. How was that? It was amazing. Uh, for, for one, for me, because I wanted, I mean, I created this book. I wanted to show people of color, especially teens, that they can see themselves in a positive light, sort of like the Harry Potter, Hunger Games um, books. And hopefully in the future, a movie would happen with The Last Prince of Lanchester Chronicles with the right producer who comes along. So I started off going to Australia. In the book, Alan teleports this necklace here, this uh, aquamarine necklace gives him the power to, to teleport. So he teleports from Miami to Australia and he meets Athena. The uh, She's a socialite and she's also related to Plato. So she takes him to her compound and tells him about his origin. So it started off in Australia. And I was Sydney, Australia, the Sydney Opera House. Uh, that place was beautiful, majestic. Uh, I was there on New Year's uh, Day. No, I take that back. No, I was there the day before New Year's Eve. So I celebrated with like over half a million people by the Sydney Opera House. We keep Urban performing, Nicole Kidman on stage rocking out. And uh, after that, I went to the Great Barrier Reef because in the book, the characters, they all go to the Great Barrier Reef and kind of like they have a little bit of R&R. And Alan, he has an affinity for the ocean and sea life. And he can see that the climate is changing. He can feel it. His 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 body he can he can see the sense like the bleach in the coral reef so i'll talk a little bit about that in the book as well and then from there where did he, where did you go from from there i about four months after that i headed to greece so zeus in this story the new book zeus narrates the story so i stayed in acropolis literally the apartment i stayed in is the apartment zeus talks about in the book now you went to these places, but you had already written the story. I that's the kind of the, the kind of the odd thing that I never went, I never been there before. So when I wrote the original book, I had a I had a muse, an Australian Greek muse. So she kind of gave me the catalyst to write the story about Athena, and. So, you know, you can do research online about, you know, Sydney, the Great Barrier Reef, all those things, but it's not the same as that you actually go there. Right, because you wrote about it. Yes. Not being there. Right. And then you just sort of, after the fact. I, after the fact, I, I went there, but I want to have more graded detail of the location of the areas, like the street names. Of, and I want to have a feel of 
what you can say, literally fill in the brick and mortar. Uh, I want to kind of have build that in even more so I have it more detailed. So by going to these places, did you change the book or is it going to be a continuation? It's a continuation, exactly. It's a continuation. Uh, so I didn't change much of the book. I just kind of built it up, kind of enhanced it with a little bit more detail of the surroundings of where the character, where, where he goes and where they go. And for me personally, I wanted to do that, which is, I know I already wrote the book, the original book with all, I pretty much described everything pretty well with the original book, but the new book is even more descriptive. And that's why I wanted to have more details. So if someone reads it, I was like, I know exactly what, I know what George Street is. That's Sydney, you know, in, you know, Sydney, Australia. I never knew what George Street was when I wrote the book. I just wrote well, I saw Sydney, some of the Australia. Film, I guess it's film that you, you did in, um, was in Africa too? You yes, I was in Africa I mean, too. Where didn't you go? Yeah, I was. <laughs> where didn't I go? I, I everywhere I spoke about in the book, I wanted to go out and adventure. And, and for me, being an African American man who never, actually, never really been out the country. I've been to Brazil. I've been to Dominican. I mean, I'm a mixture of everything. I did my DNA not too long ago, and I found out that I have like 15% European. <laughs> Uh, blood, bloodline, and I have these different tribes of Africa uh, in me. So we're a melting pot. So when I was in Brazil, you see the most beautiful people of all mixed races, but they still, you know, they're still black, but they're multicultural. So I originally wrote that in the beginning, but when I decided just to explore, going to Africa for one, uh, I talk about Zulu as the character's part of Zulu and Alien. So I've never been to Table Mountain, which is one of the new seven wonders of the world. They actually shot part of Black Panther there. I didn't even know that. But it was already in the book. But I wanted more detailed. And me going there and actually walking in the footsteps, like the character, that was been a surreal feeling for me. And and another thing, I never being a black man going to Africa and just being around, just feeling the, the culture. And South Africa is an amazing country. Uh, I think they're on their fourth black president now. And, and to be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't experience any kind of like tension or you know you know they talk about apartheid they're doing you know, the racial tension that happened in the past it was just warmth and welcome people just welcome me with open arms all the countries actually i want to get back to the book yes the last prince of atlantis i know this has been your your heart and soul this yes book, and, yes and, this, and let's talk about some of the characters uh that you've developed i mean uh from the last time until now Okay, well, well, Alan now, from the last time I created him, he was a shy kid. He's still the same shy kid, but now he has a little bit more of a, a hero's journey. So when he's on his task to find three magical, three crystals, once he finds all three, this is crystal necklace, uh, it's a ring and the crown, he can contact his alien ancestors. But now in the new book, it's, a hero's journey, but he has to actually prove himself worthy to become king. So that's what I add a little bit more uh, detail into the book. As I was mentioning before, when I travel, I want to have a little bit more detailed description. So Alan now, he realizes that he's going to be king, but he got to prove to his spiritual advisors, his, his, uh, his grandfathers, who's training him and his friends to become a great warrior and prepare for this big war that's going to happen from their alien uh, enemy who, who can come through this indigenous Indian tribe. And once they come, they actually change the Onzo as well, like climate change. And on top of that, they're also trying to find these crystal necklaces so they can rule both Earth and the alien planet. <laughs> that one, wow. Yeah, I took you to it for a little ride there. Yeah, you but, did. <laughs> wow. We're kind of going through that now, aren't we, sort of? Yeah, yeah, kind of with the current, yeah, I won't get into those kind of politics. No. Yeah. <laughs> but that's us and the other characters. Yeah, and the other characters were, I have a, Eve the Soul Reaper. It's a different book uh, with um, short story gothic novel, which I mentioned before, has a, a strong lesbian very warrior character Raven she's related to Alan so she's How are they related they're well she's they're they're cousins they're distant cousins from from um, from centuries ago um, so she's introduced in book two which was just we just finished editing that so I'm hoping to have that published hopefully in the next three months and then book three 
she comes in and help Alan and Athena, the Greek goddess character, uh, help Alan reclaim his throne. So what they have to do, they have to go to Brazil and befriend this this queen of the dragonflies. She's the only one who can help Alan. In book two, I hope I'm not getting away too much so you can read the book. No, no, but, <laughs> but you, you kind of get to know who the characters yes, are. Yes, yes. In, in book two, uh, you have Eve. Now, she's her own story. She doesn't... Yes, Eve has she has her own story, but Raven she's in she's in both she's in both stories. So okay. so the Raven character, the Black Fairy Warrior character, she comes in to help Alan reclaim his throne after he switch, switches spirits with uh, this other uh, character right. in the book. So he he can't really become king yet because he's in another person's body. So the only person can rest- bring his spirit back. They have to go to Brazil to meet this deadly queen of the of the, right. of the dragonflies and but she only has affinity for women not men oh. okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you, you sort of reach all your audience out there yeah yeah well i and this is young uh young adults yes this book. yes so uh what is the age of um adults? i would say from from 13 to 18 up hmm. yes a uh, young adult um the first book it deals with a lot of Situations teens go through, teen pregnancy, uh, even teenage suicide, uh, mental health um, is all in this fantasy world. Because even during the high school, they have regular high school drama on top of the supernatural drama. That's a lot. I don't know how you kept, would you have a chart on the wall trying to figure out all these characters and where they're going? I just always wonder how uh, an author would think. You know, the the weirdest thing with me, well, I I would say this before, and when I had my book signing at the Grove, I, I mentioned this, and actually, when I heard Anne Rice speak about it, I went to one of her book signings. That literally, I was challenging the characters, and basically, the characters were kind of telling me what to do. Um, uh, I come from a clairvoyant family. Um, so there are some things I know about Atlantis that was probably discovered maybe three years ago, where where they think where the city was. In my book, it takes place in Bermuda Triangle, and that's where they believe the that the real lost city of Atlantis is. Um, there's other things that I can't explain that I just know. But when it comes to the writing, it just it just came naturally. It just it just all flowed. And and when you mentioned with some people like, oh, you have an outline, you create a. I didn't have to create any of that. It just naturally came to me. It just I, I, I'm not a writer, so yeah, I just yeah. how a writer thinks. Yeah. And then if you're doing uh, young adults, mm-hmm. you have to kind of be in that mind frame. Right. Of, of, of kids, yeah. Um, when I first started writing the book, the, the the I was trying to cater to mostly black kids and Latino kids. So I was watching a lot of hip hop videos and watching a lot of different like films like that. So when I wrote the book, the the book you have the original book, when I put it out, it's a beautiful social media site called Goodreads. So they have all different genres of books. So I found a young adult audience, and I actually I just gave it to them like, hey, will you read this book? And I want to get some feedback. So I gave it to kids from Australia to India to America, and the majority of the kids, and even some of the soccer moms, that's like, if you change some of the slang in the book, you're gonna have a hit. You're gonna have, you have a gold mine here. Well, basically, kids are kids, no matter where they're from. Yeah. They all kind of go through that same puberty thing. Yeah, but what I, what, I was, what I was getting at, that um, the majority of my audience that I grabbed, I was trying to grab the black kids and Latino kids. I was trying to have a little bit of that that kind of um, hip-hop lingo to it, the flavor. I mean, you know, just the well, vernacular. Kind of, yeah, right. Yeah, they but, have their own kind of language. Yeah, yeah, but but the majority of kids were reading were white kids. Um, so that's the audience that I definitely want to have, but I want to have the both audience. So what I did, I kind of just toned it down a little bit with the hip hop lingo and just made it more traditional English when, when I wrote it for, like you were saying, for, for the teens. And and I I feel like I did a pretty good job reaching that that audience of those kids. Um, I have not been in high school in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Now, the, why, why a documentary on this? Well, you know, the, 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 the weirdest thing well, to me, I wanted to show the world that me being an African American man, that black people can do extraordinary things. And like you said before, you know, I've written a book already originally about all these areas I've never been to. 
But now once I hired the Breaking Bad person to edit the new book series, because the original book was three books in one, and I knew eventually I was going to have to make a three book series. That's when I just told myself, you know what? I want to document everything I do. I want to make it kind of a documentary so I can show people that, look, this, this beautiful, strong character who's multicultural is black. He, he's, this book is so epic, it's so global, and I want them to see it along with me. Like the areas of Great Barrier Reef. Uh, that was one of the most majestic places I've ever been in my life. And going to Santorini and selling and doing all these things I talked about in the book. I'm literally like, I'm living the character, like exactly how the characters are living. I wrote in the original book, but now I'm doing it where I'm creating the, the three separate books. I'm actually living what these characters are doing and then going to Africa. That, If it wasn't for this book, I've never done any of these things. And that's why I want to show the world that, hey, Leonard Clifton cares about kids, cares about just wanting to show the world that, you know, black people can do extraordinary things. And I just wanted to kind of take them along on the ride with me. That's the reason why I decided to create a documentary. How long did it take you to actually write the book? It took me, the original book, it took me 18 hours a day up to seven months, six, seven months, 18 hours a day. With a full-time job too. Well, you know, I was a broker, so I worked from home at the time. So I didn't really have to go meet anyone. I, I've been such an introvert for, I would say the last six years. So I had a real big corporate client and I only took care of them. They just sent me emails to take care of whatever benefits they needed being an insurance broker. So it was really convenient for me. So I had all the time in the world to write and I just wrote, wrote and wrote. And as I was telling you, as I was telling these characters, it's just, it was, it's just a floodgate. I couldn't just stop. I was just, just writing and writing and writing and writing. The only time I had a chance to even just kind of relax, I would go to the gym, kind of clear my mind, and things would still come to me like, oh, he's gonna be, Alan's gonna teleport to, from the Atlantean Kingdom to uh, Josh Stone's home, it's one of the characters in the book, to save Athena from this gargoyle, like his, his mortal enemies. I'm like, oh, that's gonna be so good, I gotta get home. It was, it was that kind of feeling every single day, I felt like a little kid, like I could not stop writing. When you started this book, did you imagine you'd be where you are now? No. It's, I mean, literally, I have this man, Billy Page, like, filming me right now. I never imagined me doing Comic-Con and having models dressed like the characters and people asking, who are you guys? People filming and taping, and I'm just watching, like, whoa. Literally, it's like, it was really surreal. And having a book signing at the Grove, I'm a self-published author. Not not too many people have book signings at the Barnes Noble at the Grove. And another big sign to me was Rita. I was named after Leonard Nimoy. And oh, I didn't know yeah, that. I, oh, I guess oh, I, I didn't think tell you, you did tell me that. Yeah, yes. I was named after Leonard Nimoy, and and me having my book signing, I was the first to have a book signing for Black History Month, an honor Black History Month at the Grove. My book signing was the next day after William Shatner had his book signing about Leonard Nimoy. So his banner is next to my banner. When I'm walking in the Grove and I see like William Shatner, you know I mean? this iconic like you know movie star, and my banner is next to his with Leonard Nimoy and Leonard Clifton. <laughs> my hair stood up in the back of my head. And the next day was Bob Kane who wrote The Dark Knight and Stan Lee showed up. I'm in the middle of these two, these iconic people. I still sometimes I can't believe it. Like I created this book because I knew this should be a niche, a market for um, African American uh, Latinos, because it's so multicultural, so diverse. That I'm actually I had the honor to have a book signing there and explain everything, like I'm saying to you about how I wrote the book, how it came about, and and, and doing it was Comic Con. It wasn't for Comic Con. I would never create the three book series. I never. I think travel the world because when people saw how the characters looked, um, with um, how I, you know, with the Alan has dreadlocks, these gold streaks, and he had like these these really blue green like eyes, kind of like Rihanna, uh, but more almost like a glowing, almost alien like. And the people were just like girls. It was like to to Kevin, the guy dressed like the you know the characters, was like hi handsome, and the, and the guys to to Emily who was dressed like Athena. Like, Oh, you know, like, can I take a picture with you? That's when I knew I had something tangible. That's when I knew, and that's when I said to myself, I have to travel the world and make sure the book is more authentic and more detailed since I'm paying a professional 
writer to edit the book I edited myself. And I knew if I was going to have a book series, it has to be professionally done. And I'm amazed that I had an audience. I have an audience now, but I had an audience then when I just did it just organically by myself. Now, one of the characters uh, is a lesbian. Why did you use a lesbian as a, as well, a character? Um, I just I I felt like for for me personally, me being an African American man, and I know just creating this book is going to be going against the 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 giants like the Harry Potter's, the Hunger Games, and all those all those things. I wanted this character to be strong and positive and. And he's always doing the right thing, fighting. So that's why I wanted to have the same thing for a lesbian character who's happened to be black or multicultural. It's related it's just to be positive and strong because we're all human beings and no one should be pigeonholed because of their gender, their race or whatever, you know, because they, you know, a person, a man loves a man, a woman loves a woman. It doesn't matter. We're all human beings and we're, there's good positive people who are gay there's good positive people who are black latino asian white we're, we're all the same that's the reason why i created it, if that makes sense yeah it does it does uh, so what now what's next well what's next now well <clears throat> well book two is about to come out um and after book three is done i'm going to start working on the screenplay and from there hopefully a film will happen well hopefully uh, a film will happen before then, and for Eve, the Soul Reaper with the Raven character, I I really want that to be either like a, it could be a Netflix series or a TV series, movie, just as much as the Last Prince of Atlantis, but the Last Prince of Atlantis Chronicles is the catalyst to get everything going first. Once that's done, then I'm going to have Eve to be the next big thing in uh, the young adult world when it comes to. To books, films, uh, everything. I was going to think about what character would be next for you. Do you have one in mind? Right now, I'm just so focused on on this boy. Actually, I do have another book I've been thinking about doing. is about a group of teenagers that they're um, they're kind of been groomed to be like the next president in, in the future for different countries, like kind of be a global rule of the world. So to speak, and it's like there's one of the guys. It's it's, it's it's three girls and like four guys, and they're all going to this school. I'm not there yet with it. I've just been playing around. But I just with thought it. these characters, have, they're like your children. I yes, I, I know because knowing you, I mean, these characters. It's just uh, just watching them develop and grow and. They're going to sprout rings, wings one of these days. They are, and you're going to be at the premiere one day. I, I really, truly feel that something's going to happen with The Last Prince of Lancers Chronicles. Um, whether it's going to be a year from now, two years from now, but my mission is to make that happen. And, and with your determination and, and your drive, I know it's going to happen sooner than that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And it's not about me. It's always been about to inspire kids, kids of color. I mean, all kids and just people to see themselves. Well, and kids their, need heroes. They actually, they need heroes that are like them. And not just these these people out there. It's just, uh, one of them is a hero. Yes, and yes. And I guess they, they really need that. So how do you get the book or oh, what's happening? You can go on LeonardClifton.com. Um, actually, I have a, a Damon John from Shark Tank. He actually introduces the book. is on my um, on my webpage, LeonardClifton.com. Um, so from there, you can order the book from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, iTunes, uh, my social media pages uh, that has the uh, the websites from Leonard Clifton author on Instagram, uh, Atlantean author Twitter, The Last Prince of Atlantis Chronicles uh, fan page. You can you can get it all from there. But also want to say I'll do have affinity when something does happen with this. I really feel it's going to happen. But I do, I do work with two organizations that I, I really have a great affinity for. One is um, it's called GECO, GECO Foundation. Uh, what what they what this foundation is is a good friend of mine named Alpha Onyema. They have a school in Nigeria, so they have uh, for Boko Haram, the you know the terrorists. So they have a they have a school for the girls, and one of the recipients that I guess helped part of it is David O. Yellowo. 
and also they have a co-ed uh, soccer uh, field. It's like one of the state of the art, and they do a lot of great things. I um, also have affinity for uh, Children's Hospital Los Angeles, their literary uh, healing program. So the literary, excuse me, the literary healing program is for say, if a child was just diagnosed, say they have cancer, they're gonna lose a limb or something like that. That's pretty tough. So they have like some self-help books and things like that. Um, so from my website, you will see a link where if you'd like to donate, you can. Um, but my whole thing is, once this happens, I'm going to create my own foundation to help kids, especially kids in the foster care program here in America. Because a lot of kids, when they age out, they have nowhere to go. Right. They have nowhere to go. And a lot of these girls, they're, they're like, they're, they're been pulled into sex trafficking and, and things like that. And I want to, I want to help in some kind of way. There, you have your, I can't see your hand or, or your soul. I have to say your soul in so many things. And it's good. Oh, well, thank you. I, I'm I, mean just, it, I mean it in a good way. Thank you. I'm, I'm, you have such positive energy and, it, and, and you could see that, what you do. And you care about what you do. Yeah, I do. I, I really want to, I almost broke up, broke down. I really love people and this book. Literally, has been my life. I mean, I am the character Alan King in some ways, and um, I just want to inspire the world. I just want to inspire the world to show, like I said before, that black people can do extraordinary things. Latino people, multicultural black people can do extraordinary things. And, and kids who feel like they have nothing or no one can be anyone they want to be. Yes, yes. Leonard, thank you so much for joining us here at The Out Agenda. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, and it's, it's so exciting to see your enthusiasm and your desire and your just your love. Thank you so much. Thank you again for having me here. And all I want to say to all the listeners that uh, if, you, if you buy the book, believe me, I'm here to help to make the world a better place of positivity. So LeonardClifton.com and Hell Atlantis. Thank you, Leonard. Thank you.